Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we'll be talking about what is a globulum axillary cirrus. But before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more videos. Globulum axillary cyst, as the name suggests, it is located between the globular and maxillary process fusion area. Or in other words, it's located between the lateral incisor and the canine. In comparison with the nasopalatine duct cyst located between the two maxillary centrals, and in comparison with the lateral periodontal cyst that is located between the canine premolar. So this one basically, it is located between the lateral incisor and canine, and it does not appear in the mandible from the name globulum maxillary, maxillary equal to maxilla. So it only appears in the maxilla between the lateral incisor and canine, never appears in the mandible. So let's talk about the uh, clinical features for the globulum axillary cyst. It is a non-odontogenic origin, which what do I mean by non-odontogenic? Means that it is not tooth related. So the associated teeth are non-carious. When you take an OPG or a periapical x-ray, you will see that there will be an inverted pear-shaped radiolucency located between the lateral incisor and canine. In addition to that, it is completely asymptomatic, discovered routinely by clinical examination. The patient will not complain of any pain. He will tell you just what, what is this swelling that I have inside my mouth. As you can see in the picture, the patient came to us because of this large swelling that he is having, but he's not complaining of any pain. And at the associated teeth basically are non carious so upon examination, we discovered that the patient is having globulum axillary cyst that is located between the lateral incisor and canine region. Here is an, a picture that is, was taken basically from the OPG, the orthopentomogram. As you can see, we have an inverted pear shaped radiolucency located between the lateral incisor and canine, and the associated teeth basically are non carriers, the, which confirms our clinical diagnosis. A more clearer picture for a patient uh, who had a globulum axillary cyst but was left untreated until it became very large that affected his heart palate eventually. Then he came to us and we told him that complete removal of the cyst is mandatory from the first place. Why did you ignore it? Because if you ignore it, it will affect the vital structures in the heart palate area. Anyways, we completely removed the, uh, the cyst and there is no any chances for recurrence uh, and that's it. Now, the most important part is what are the causes behind the, this type of cyst? The most important thing is the entrapment epithelium between the medial nasal process and the maxillary process that is located between the lateral incisor and the canine area. What do I mean? Further explanation will be given for you. So as you can see in the picture, we have three processes. We have the lateral nasal process, medial nasal process, and maxillary process. Once the contents, they are in being entrapped due to the trauma, for instance, during birth, due to the trauma, the contents between the median nasal process and the maxillary process, they are entrapped. They cannot go out anymore. This will result in the accumulation of the contents and this will result in the development of a globulum maxillary cyst. I hope you understood my point. The treatment should be given even if it is completely asymptomatic because as I said, if not treated, then it will affect the vital structures in the heart palate not only that, it will cause dilaceration for the adjacent teeth as well. So inculation or complete removal of this cyst is mandatory in all cases. Once it is diagnosed, you need to remove it completely. And that's it. I am done. Thank you all for watching my video. If you have any questions or you are in a doubt of anything, please do not hesitate to write it down in the comment section below. Goodbye now.